Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hope you had a great weekend. Go Astros. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, November 7th. Happy Monday. Yeah, what an exciting game this weekend. A lot of people happy in Houston and here in the local area. Uh, things have been like a little, you know, muggy out there with the weather, but we're going to check in with Stephen first. Yeah, Sarah's up in a moment, but Stephen's going to get us. Very messy commute. Oh, yeah, it's been a messy Monday for sure, Mark Seth. Let's get a look at Trans Guy. You notice how they're moving the camera around. This happens, but check out that backup there. Just bumper to bumper, a place you don't want to be right now. But we do have a crash reported in that area. But that stretch of cars is going way back into the distance there. We're also seeing that along the frontage roads. Unfortunately, uh, it's just it hasn't dwindled down. We had a lot of problems earlier out on the roadways, and it looks like that is going to be the trend, at least for right now. But let's go ahead and show you where that crash is pinpointed because uh, Texas reports that uh, 410 northbound and you notice that there is that buildup of red and yellow and orange, which is never uh, something we want to see on the map. But obviously we hope everyone's doing OK out there. It just thinks uh, it just looks like we're going to have to talk about this for a little while. Unfortunately, we'll watch it closely. Uh, better news over here. We did have a crash also reported along 410 westbound at San Pedro Avenue that is cleared out. But notice that there's still a little bit of a buildup that remains. And really, that's what we have been seeing aside from some of these crashes. It's just a lot of slowdowns. I was talking to Mike Osterhage earlier. He thinks that it could be because there were some damp roads out there, but uh, just something that we're going to have to watch very closely in the area. On top of that, we also have some road closures. And if you have to plan your commute right now, still at home, grab those phones right now. You can scan that QR code. We'll take you directly to our KSAT traffic page. And at the list at the bottom, you'll find a full list of closures there. Mark, Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Looking out there with live cam. Uh, looks a little gloomy out there, but um, I know maybe that will result in some rain, maybe. Well, it has been resulting in some rain around San Antonio, but the thing is, it's not much, unfortunately, Steph. You know, we maybe see up to about a couple tenths of an inch of rain by the time the week is over, because what we've been seeing out there this morning with some showers and some dampness and some drizzle, this is going to be the case for us throughout this week, especially through Thursday. You can see right now around San Antonio, just a few splotchy showers there uh, through Alamo Heights in the southwest side of town as well. Uh, but in Guadalupe County, we've got a more substantial shower that's about to cross over I-10 just to the north of New Berlin and just to the south and west of Seguin. These are moving to the north. So crossing I-10 here just within the next couple of minutes toward McQueenie and Marion in Guadalupe County. Again, as we zoom out, I'll go ahead and put this in motion. You can see very few showers out there, especially just north of Hondo. Uh, again, this dampness is going to be with us all week long. Needless to say, my friends, not a good hair day, but we will be looking at this uh, afternoon, seeing our rain chances taper off, even seeing a few peaks of sunshine too. It's going to be a warm one for us. Now today, molds are low at 410 and pigweed is low at 30, but with the dampness out there, I do expect for us to see the mold count go up in the coming days. So keep that in mind. Prepare for higher mold counts through again about Thursday. The aquifer is down half a foot over the past 24 hours. We're still in state to water restrictions. Seems like we've been there for quite some time as SAWS customers. And again, this dampness, it's just a bit of a nuisance. We're really not going to see much of a positive impact on the drought. But coming up in the forecast, I'll tell you what you need to know if you're planning on heading to the polls tomorrow might want to bring an umbrella and we're going to talk about our strongest cold front of the season yet expected to arrive just in time for the weekend. Those forecast details and a more in-depth look at the radar coming up in just a bit. Mark Staff. Sarah, thank you. Top stories we're following this morning, a shooting outside the Perfect 10 Men's Club off 410 across from North Star Mall. But according to police, there was more that happened before that shooting. They say a man stole a vehicle after setting another one on fire at a gas station on Perrin Central near Wurzbach Parkway. This all happened just after midnight. The man then drove from the Wurzbach Parkway area all the way to Perfect 10 off of 410 near McCullough. Now police say the man started bumping into cars in the parking lot with the stolen vehicle, then tried to rob a group of people outside the club with a rifle. A security guard saw the gun and police say he acted quickly, shooting the suspect in the head. At last check, the suspect was still in the hospital in critical condition. San Antonio police are investigating another shooting, this one on the east side around 10 last night. A man was shot in the leg while he was sitting on his porch. This happened near Iowa and Pine Streets, and a neighbor told police that they saw a white vehicle drive by and someone inside fire shots. So far, no arrests have been made. 
One day away from Election Day and after low early voting turnout, election officials here in Bear County are preparing for long lines tomorrow. More than 350,000 people voted the past two weeks during early voting, but that appears to be 13 percent lower compared to the last midterm election. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow. You can find a list of polling locations online at ksat.com by scanning the QR code in the right hand side of your screen. We also have a list of some of the busiest polling spots. Election officials are asking voters to be patient on Election Day if they are stuck in those long lines. A reminder, our election coverage will begin at 7 p.m. tomorrow when the polls close. You can tune in to our election night live stream with Steve Spreester, Stefania Jimenez, and Myra Arthur as they talk to special guests and bring you the latest results. Control of both chambers of Congress is at stake, and that's in addition to dozens of governor's races and other state-level contests that will set the table for the 2024 presidential campaigns. CNN's Karen Kafa is on Capitol Hill with a look at the top issues for voters and the candidates' closing arguments. Both parties sent their biggest stars out on the campaign trail this weekend in the final push to Election Day. At stake, the balance of power here on Capitol Hill and the shape of the next two years of the Biden presidency. President Joe Biden isn't on the ballot, but for most Americans, it's their first chance to weigh in on his party and policies. This election isn't a referendum, it's a choice. It's a choice between two fundamentally different visions of America. Among states taking center stage in the battle for the U.S. Senate, tight races in four that President Biden flipped in the 2020 presidential election. Arizona, Wisconsin, Georgia, and Pennsylvania, where Biden and former President Barack Obama stumped Saturday. Democracy itself is on the ballot. The stakes are high. And former President Donald Trump also rallied. This election is your chance to make your voice heard. Underscoring how 2022 may foreshadow the 2024 presidential contest. Polls indicate most voters are looking at the economy right now as they cast ballots. Democrats touted Friday's October jobs report and unemployment still near a half century low as a sign their economic policies are working, while Republicans point to the highest inflation in 40 years. The inflation crushing our, 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 our pocketbooks can't fill up our tank, can't, can't fill up our uh, grocery cart. Abortion is a human right. Democrats hope the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade in June will motivate voters, especially women, while Republicans have accused Democrats of being weak on crime, especially in major cities. Both parties eager to drive turnout in their favor. As of a tally on Sunday, more than 40 million early voting ballots had been cast across 47 states. That's outpacing pre-election day voting back in the 2018 midterms. But it's still too soon to tell what that means for overall turnout, as Americans' voting habits have changed, especially in the pandemic era. On Capitol Hill, I'm Karen Kafa. In your morning headlines, emotions pour out on stage in London from the older brother of singer Aaron Carter. And an eight-year-old climbs to new heights, but not everyone's impressed. Plus, Powerball is a pretty big number, and Mattress Mac is sleeping pretty easy these days. Let's check in with David Sears. David Sears, welcome back. You were hey, out last welcome. week. Good Glad to have to you back. back. Especially coming back, talking about dude winning $75 million off of a baseball game. Nice. Way to go, Mac. That's pretty good. So, yeah. you know, talk about stuffing money under your mattress. <laughs> exactly. That's a money. lot. Brand and new mattresses. mattresses. Yeah. Like that. Get to that in just a second. But first, the Backstreet Boys were in London last night, and their concert got emotional. Aaron Carter passed away last week, and his older brother, Nick Carter, was having a hard time holding back tears while he was being consoled. 34-year-old Aaron Carter found dead Saturday in his apartment in L.A. He was found by a house sitter in the bathtub. A neighbor even tried to help save him, but to no avail. Information in the call stated the house sitter had found a male in the upstairs bathroom bathtub unresponsive. The house sitter was instructed to start CPR on the mail. The house sitter or maid came to the door and uh, she just was screaming like he's dead, he's dead. And we're like, well, who? Let us help, let us help, you know. I told him my wife's an RN and um, she still wouldn't let us in. Slammed the door, locked it. Tonight we've got a little bit of heavy hearts because we lost one of our family members yesterday. Yeah, you can see that emotion on the stage there. Carter started his singing career at age nine, opening up for the Backstreet Boys. His second album went platinum, and he also had several acting roles. Nick posted that Aaron had trouble with addiction and mental illness. The medical examiner still trying to determine the exact cause of death. Carter was engaged to the mother of his 11-month-old child.
He did it, meet the youngest person to climb California's El Capitan rock formation. That is eight-year-old Sam Baker. We told you about Sam a couple of weeks ago and was getting ready for the big climb. It was a four-day guided trip that ended on top of the mountain. He started the 3,000-foot climb on October 25th, reached the summit on the 28th. There were cheers and even a few boo birds. Some members of a local climbing club questioned the technique that was used by the eight year old. It's called jugging. Use handheld devices on fixed ropes to slide up that rope, but not even touch the face. But in the end, just getting to the top is pretty incredible, not to mention dangerous. Plus, he was sleeping on the side of a rock face a thousand feet in the air. That's pretty good for an eight year old. Come on. The Powerball jackpot is like $2 billion since nobody won it on Saturday. However, a person bought a ticket at the Boxborough gas station near Boston worth a million. But tonight, you're looking at big time life changing money. And who doesn't dream a little when you think about that kind of payout? I definitely would quit my job and travel. Charities and definitely take care of my family. I don't even know. That's just a life changing amount of money. I'd probably, like I said, probably quit my job and then. Um, you know, buy a house in like Hawaii and, and, and just chill. Just hang out in Hawaii for a while. Once again, the odds one in 300 million. The cash value is about 929 million. That's we still going to pay taxes on that. So I don't think you're getting all that much. Speaking of winning big bucks, Mattress Mac can stuff 75 million under his mattress and sleep easy. He is a furniture store owner in Houston known for betting big on sporting events. Since the Astros won the World Series Saturday night in Houston, he won the 75 million. And true to his form, customers will reap the benefits. Gallery Furniture customers who paid 3000 or more for a mattress will get their money back. Seeing the Astros win and refunding the 70, 75 million dollars. Wow. This is some delighted customers that will be an experience of a lifetime for our customers. You know, he's been betting on sporting yes. events for a, a lot of years. So you wonder if this 75 million kind of evens things out or puts him yeah. ahead or or just kind of like lessens the blow of all those other losses. I just another blow. Yeah. Yeah. Another awesome storyline to come out of this weekend oh, yeah. with the Astros yeah. winning it all. Yeah, that's great stuff. We'll have some of the highlights for you in just in just a few minutes. We'll soak so it up as they, as they get ready for their big parade in Houston. Yeah, that's coming up at Sunny noon. Day. Yep. David, thank you. Good to have you back, sir. 910, about 75 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. San Antonio FC heading to the big game after defeating Colorado Springs, uh, Springs Switchbacks FC last night 2-0. They are now playing for the USL Championship. Plus, Good morning, I'm Max Massey, and it is that time of year again. Take a look. It is Share the Shoes time. Coming up after the break, we're going to explain how you can get involved and help kids in and around our area. 914 on your Monday morning shoes can seem like a simple thing, but not everyone is fortunate enough to own them. That's why we're taking part in the share the shoes drive as a part of our KSAT community event. Max Massey is at SAPD headquarters to talk more about this donation drive and tell us who benefits. Good morning, Max. Good morning, guys. What helps kids in and around our community and take a look. You know, hot start to the morning. We got shoes filling the tables. We're not going to talk about the size 16 shoes that are right here, but that is one of the issues. You know, last year we got a lot of kid-sized shoes, but remember, this is not just for little kids. This is for all ages of kids in our community. Joined here with Officer Robinson. So, you know, why is this initiative, why Share the Shoes, so important to you? So Share the Shoes is important to me because it's a time where we can give back to our community. I know personally I've been able to give back to a child with brand new shoes and the smile and happiness in their face um, just makes me happy to be a part of this department and this community. And it really is so easy and such a, a fun way to, to help so many people in our community, so many families. You know, how can people step up and help out? So people can help out by um, donating brand new shoes or brand new socks to any of our six substations. There will be a designated area where they can drop off um, shoes and socks. Okay, now do you guys have a, a goal for this year? So last year we hit 1,620 pairs of shoes. This year we would like to surpass that as much as possible. Okay, and how long do people have to actually go out, buy the shoes, and drop them off at any of the substations? So from now to December 16th, um, people can go and donate the shoes and socks. Officer Robinson, thank you so much. And guys, it really is just as easy and simple as that. There's going to be a share the shoes box at all the substations. You walk in with the new shoes or socks. You walk up to the box, you drop them in, and there you go. Those socks and shoes, 
They go to help kids in and around our community. And if you have any questions, we're going to have much more coming up in the news at noon and, of course, KSAT.com. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Max. We look forward to it. Thank you, Max. Beard's looking great, by the way. Yes. I ought to be young and have such a nice jawline. <laughs> You got a nice, have a nice one too, jawline. Mark. It's in there somewhere, but thank oh, you, ladies. Goodness. Oh. Outside with live cam, 75 degrees, very humid. Uh, I drove through a downpour on my way in this yeah. morning up near earlier. Stone Oak, but that was earlier, much there, earlier. There were, there are still some isolated mm -hmm. pockets of, of heavier rain showers out there, but all in all, it's been a pretty damp morning. I've yes. run into quite a bit of road spray around San Antonio this morning. I'm sure you have too, uh, but this is going to be the norm for us guys over the next couple of mornings. Uh, damp mornings. Tomorrow it'll be more of a drizzle uh, than these showers that are a bit more organized, but still. All in all, a very damp week for us, at least in the mornings. And even with that being said, we're not anticipating all that much rain from this. It's not going to help us out too much with the drought. But what we can do is we can actually zoom in really close on this radar. I love this radar because you can get down into the street levels here. So let's take a look at 281 and uh, and 410 right near the airport. The airport actually may end up clocking in some rain from this isolated shower that's working its way through Broadway toward 410. And again, you can see here's the airport uh, and uh, just some isolated showers pushing to the north at about 10 miles per hour. So if this shower were to hold together as it moves to the north at 10 miles per hour, let's take a look at some neighborhood view here when it could get to you. So it could be near Hill Country Village by about 940 just within the next uh, 30 minutes or so uh, towards Stone Oak by 10 o'clock. But again, that's if it holds together. These are moving pretty uh, slowly and they have plenty of time to fall apart before they get to your location. Here's one of those pockets of heavy showers that Mark was talking about. It's uh, just to the northwest of Rio Medina, kind of over some ranch land just to the south and west of the lake itself. But again, not a ton of uh, healthy rainfall out there for us, but we are seeing one area of showers a little bit more organized out near Seguin and Marion. Again, we can get down into the street view here uh, near McQueeny, right near Stagecoach Road. That's where we're getting some of that heavier rain shower. Again, it's moving to the north at about 10 miles per hour. And I'll go ahead and zoom out so that everyone can take a wider view. We've got some showers in northern Wilson County, in western Gonzales County as well this morning. Elsewhere, though, it's just damp and gray. Up in the hill country near Kerrville, we've got some showers too up there, uh, but otherwise just damp and gray out there this morning. Take a look outside right near the airport. You can see the thick humidity in the air. It's 77 degrees outside, starting to see some sun peak out near the airport. Humidity is at 88%, very humid outside. And as we take a look at the satellite and temperatures, again, some peaks of sunshine here and there, but generally mostly cloudy to overcast skies. Temperatures in the low to mid 70s this morning and a wider view here at 70 degrees in Del Rio, 80 in Catula, 70 in Rock Springs. Again, throughout the rest of the day, we're going to see the rain, the showers themselves taper off. But by about lunch up in the hill country, there could still be a few isolated showers around San Antonio, we'll be starting to see a little bit more sun this afternoon during the evening commute, not as damp as it was this morning. So keep that in mind, but there still could be an isolated shower out there, about 20% chance. And then in the evening, we will not see any rain whatsoever. In your KSAT 12 hour forecast, cloudy with some drizzle through about 11 o'clock. Around noon, we'll have mostly cloudy skies and isolated 20 to 30% chance for a shower. It's going to be a warm one. We're going to get up to 85 degrees this afternoon. Much warmer than seasonably average. And then in the evening, balmy 70s uh, and pretty muggy out there as well. Elsewhere, our average high temperature this time of year is 74. So we're going to be about 10 degrees hotter than that. It's going to be a warm, humid, bad hair day. Up in the hill country, a few degrees cooler as the clouds will stick around there a little bit longer. In the upper 70s for Bernie, Bulverde, Kerrville, that area as well. Now, as we look at our weather setup across the state of Texas, from Dallas to San Antonio here, even toward the valley, that's where we've got those showers. But as we look to the west, notice all the snow across the northern Rockies. 
No, we're not going to get snow, but this low pressure system is going to pull much colder air towards San Antonio by Friday. Friday, we're going to have a strong cold front move through. Veterans Day itself, the highs will be in the 80s, but by the weekend, uh, pardon me, Veterans Day, the highs will be in the 70s, but by the weekend, highs are going to fall from the 80s and 70s, morning lows from the 60s, highs will be in the 50s over the weekend morning lows will be in the 40s and as you take a look at your forecast over the next seven days i want to mention that early tomorrow morning if you're planning on voting there will be fog and drizzle in the early morning hours but we're going to keep the status quo for our weather through about thursday it's friday that that front arrives and take a look at the weekend we'll be looking at mornings in the 40s afternoons in the 50s guys this is our first real deal cold front i think in many different ways coming up i'm going to talk a little bit more about potential impacts from that front. Yeah, we posted about this morning people going bonkers over this being in the forecast and planning their menus and a big change fashion changes and everything. <laughs> yes. I may be making some chili this weekend. We'll see. That would be okay. appropriate. I like the way you say it though. Real deal. Cold front. Real deal. OK, we're we ready. May for it. be yeah. willing to try your chili. Thank you very much, Sarah. <laughs> 921, 76 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> After a car went into crashing into a north side house this weekend, neighbors say they want something done. That one, one woman witnessed and what she hopes the city will do to prevent any more crashes like this from happening. A crash into a north side home early yesterday morning is something neighbors say happens way too often. A woman is being charged while driving while intoxicated in a two vehicle crash. Now one car went into the home, the other hit a tree. Camelia Juarez spoke to neighbors who share what they witnessed as police try to figure out what happened exactly. We heard a big boom. Next door neighbor Martha Hernandez woke up around one in the morning to the sounds of a car crashing into her neighbor's home on Clear Lake Drive near Thousand Oaks and Bulverde Road. Terrified. Uh, my parents' bedroom are right next to it, 10 feet from where the accident happened. And uh, we were very scared. Fortunately, no one was inside the home, but the damage to the home was extensive. It went all the way to the alley, pushing all the furniture and things out. It almost hit the, the house across the alley. When San Antonio police arrived, they arrested the driver who crashed into the house for driving while intoxicated. The passenger is expected to be OK. As for the other vehicle that hit the tree, that driver and passenger are in serious condition at University Hospital. Firefighters had to put a support beam inside the house to keep it from collapsing. We heard screaming in the house, get out of the house, get out of the house. Hernandez says the previous owner of the home warned her, saying the house had been hit by passing cars multiple times. We're having that problem with the cars racing all the way from Bulverde, coming and jumping the, the curb and getting airborne. That was Camelia Juarez reporting. Now, neighbors say they would like to see more traffic safety measures in their area, like flashing lights and speed bumps. If you would like to request speed bumps in your neighborhood, you can call 311. That's for the city of San Antonio. All right, right now, 926, 76 degrees. More ahead. Including a look at some of the big matchups this weekend, a lot of good college football games, and UTSA and the Longhorns getting some big wins. David Sears will be back after the break to break down this weekend sports. But before that, it's been about a week, still no sign of a 25-year-old man missing in Somerset. Why his family say it is urgent that he be found and how you can possibly help. Welcome back 930, a family desperately searching for their missing sibling. It's been a week since 25-year-old Austin Weissman was last seen in Somerset. Alyssa Cole spoke with his brother and sister who are doing everything they can to bring him home. Here in South Bear County, off the 2000 block of Somerset Road, 25-year-old Austin Wiseman was last seen on October 30th wearing this New York Mets baseball jersey with a dark hoodie underneath and dark jeans. This is not normal behavior. We are in constant communication. We were together the whole day before. Wiseman's sister, Chelsea Martinez, says the day before her brother's disappearance, he spent the day with family and slept at their parents' home. The next morning, he left for work but never arrived. His sister and brother have been looking for him ever since. We have checked all, you know, hospitals, any local tow yards. They believe he was traveling northbound here on Somerset Road towards 410, but they haven't been able to locate his vehicle in this area. 
They say he was driving a red 2013 Cadillac. And it does have it does have a camera, a rear camera that is kind of hanging off. So if that's something that you see, that's a, that's a car that will stick out. Austin Wiseman is described as 6'1 with brown hair and tattoos, showing a face of a woman on his left hand and a Mayan statue on his left forearm. If you have anything, even if it's something small, if it could lead to any answers for us. And that was Alyssa Cole reporting. The family's concerned because they say Weissman has a medical condition that requires immediate medication. If you have any information that could help, you are asked to call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. That number is 210-335-6000. Outside with live cam, lots going on in the weather department this week. Sarah is in for Justin. Good morning again. Good morning. Although I have to say, my beard does not look as good as Justin's beard. So go support him for No Shave November and Mark as well. Thank you. And Mark was like, what about me? <laughs> uh, and Steven and all the guys. Yeah. Just David to your left. <laughs> yeah, David's over there. Hey guys, you know, it's kind of uh, damp and dreary out there this morning. We have got showers out there. A lot of folks at least having to put on those windshield wipers this morning for the morning commute. You can see just how sporadic those showers are around San Antonio, though. Pretty isolated. There's one shower right near the airport and in the northwestern side of the county. Take a look a little heavier shower though moving to the west side of Medina Lake pushing toward Bandera early this morning and in Guadalupe County that's where we've seen some of the uh, heavier rain showers again though these are pretty sporadic and widespread one moving through just the north side of Seguin and near McQueenie as well uh, and then further off to the uh, east here in Gonzales County from St. James all the way down to Oak Forest we've got one shower that's mo moving to the north these are moving to the north at about 10 miles per hour. They're pretty isolated, widely separated. And as we take a wider view here, we do have some showers up near Kerrville and in the hill country as well. Now, gradually this activity is going to taper off this afternoon, but it is going to stay pretty muggy throughout the day. Take a look at temperatures around San Antonio at the airport. It's 77, Stinson 77, JBSA Randolph near Converse about 77 as well. And throughout the day today, a few peaks the sunshine, especially by about lunch, will be in the upper 70s by lunch and in the 80s in the afternoon. It's going to be a warm one, 85 degrees for the high temperature, only a 20% chance that you'll run into a shower during your evening commute. And in the uh, later hours in the evening, temperatures will be in the 70s. Humidity will stay high. Here are my weather headlines. Here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast in a couple of minutes. Of course, today, rain decreasing. It's going to stay humid and warm. Tomorrow, though, drizzly for early morning morning voters. If you're planning on voting early, uh, add a little bit of extra time to your commute because we're going to have some drizzle as well. Then our next cold front arriving Friday morning, it's going to lead to a chilly weekend. It's going to be a nice sweater weather over the weekend. Our first real taste of uh, fall coming up over the weekend. I've got these headlines and more coming up in a few minutes. Mark, Steph, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Looking out there, uh, there was a pretty big holdup in this area on Loop 410 and Ingram Road earlier because of the crash, but it looks like things have cleared up and they're moving right now. Yeah, there's 410 at San Pedro, still some slow going due to wet roads in that area, but the big one, again, northbound 410 out mm -hmm. by Ingram, mm -hmm. all clear now, and that log jam has eased quite a bit. And it was an exciting double overtime win for the Roadrunners, mm -hmm. and the Longhorns also got a win on the road. Plus, those Astros celebrating the word se weird, weird World Series <laughs> win today over in Houston with a big parade. David Sears is back with a look at a weekend sports. It was kind of weird how it went when you when you think about it. We'll talk yeah. about that in just a second. No Cowboys this weekend. No Texans this weekend. They lost Thursday, but there's still plenty of things to watch over the weekend. How about the UTSA Roadrunners? They had the lead over UAB in Birmingham. Less than four minutes left in the game. The Blazers scored twice and into overtime. Frank Harris threw two TD passes in the OT. First OT and then the second OT. The defense shut down the Blazers on the attempt. The Rudners got the win 44-38 in double overtime. So UTSA is now 7-2. They're 5-0 in conference. They have Louisiana Tech, Rice, and UTEP left on their schedule. They can win out, win this conference going undefeated. By the way... They are not ranked at 7-2 and 5-0 and in conference. However, they did get some votes in the AP poll, so that's a good thing. The Longhorns in Kansas State had a big battle. Not as big as it was supposed to be, maybe. It looks like the Horns are finding their stride. Don't know 
where they would be without B. John Robinson, though. 209 yards rushing and a touchdown. Quentin Ewers threw two TD passes with the win. The Horns now ranked 18th in the country. They have won four of their last five. They are in second place behind the undefeated TCU Horn Frogs in the conference. Texas now 4-2 and two in the Big 12. They host TCU Saturday. Talk about a big game. By the way, the Frogs beat Tech over the weekend. They are 9-0, and 6-0 in conference. So they are taking on the 4-2 and two Longhorns. TCU is ranked fourth in the country. If that's the way the bowl committee sees it, then they are, at least for now, in the tournament. We'll have to see how things shape up because TCU still has a tough schedule. I think they have Texas and they have Baylor left on their schedule, at least those two. So that'll be interesting to see. So a lot of fun down the stretch. All right, the Aggies are headed the wrong way, direct, the wrong direction. They lost to Florida, and that's five in a row. Jimbo Fisher still has a job, I think, as of today. All right, so we mentioned Mattress Mac winning $75 million on the Astros because the Astros won the World Series over the Phillies four games to two. Jordan Alvarez is coming up to bat after that home run by the Phillies. And watch this guy. Boom! <laughs> that thing is still going. It is, it's still going. He hit that thing 450. There were players saying, I've never seen a ball hit up there before. It was so far, United has flight attendants on it now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, they're crazy. serving some, uh, some drinks after the win. And here's the uh, last play of the game. Kyle Tucker in foul ground. Got it. Wow. Astros win. So they were up 4-1. They won it 4-1. Of course, remember when they won it back in the little controversy, mm -hmm. don't care. This is straight up win right here. Jeremy Pena, the rookie shortstop, was the MVP. Here's what you're talking about. Weird. This is kind of how weird it was. So the Astros lose the first game. They win the second game in Houston. The series goes to Philly. Philly hits five home runs in game three, wins seven nothing. Game four, the Astros no hit them. Mm -hmm. So they go from five home runs to not a single hit with four pitchers, and the Astros win three in a row and end up winning the World Series. Isn't that a nice-looking trophy? Man, that's a fantastic big, that's a big trophy. And most happy for, for that man right there. Yes, yeah. that was amazing. He's 70, had a life of baseball and just now got his old. first World yeah. Series 73 title. years old. Been yeah. there before, hadn't won it, but he got it. So, yep. And, and the, the players love him. Baseball loves him. Just a great guy, Dusty Baker. So congratulations to him oh. and the Astros. I think they got the parade coming up pretty quick. Today. Yes, yes. they are. Yeah, our sister so, station Houston starts their coverage online around 11. The parade's 11. at 12. Yeah. So. They're expecting a ton of traffic and I'm upwards of three million people. people or more to watch this, this awesome. parade That's today. Right. That's right. School, schools were canceled. That's yep. just so yep. fat. My wife even ordered one of their hats. Wow. She was so yeah. excited. Her grandmother was like a big huge Astros oh, fan. That's so nice. The hat. Well, it was a great weekend. That's grandma. for sure. Uh, except for to your Spurs fan. Uh, what happened to the euphoria for the Spurs? Oh. What happened to it? We have to share it It was here what before happened? you went on vacation. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And you it, left and it, it left. left. Yeah, we, we, we need you back, David. They were 5-2. and two, They lost three in a row. Yeah, I know. And they lost to Denver Saturday. No yeah. more vacation for you. Okay. Well, I'm not sure I can do much for them. Uh, by the way, Keldon Johnson is averaging 23 points. They got six guys averaging in double figures. One of the problems that they're having, though, is they got uh, 16 turnovers a game. And that's that's they got to clean that up. And they got Denver again tonight here in San Antonio at 8.30. That's a late one. So stay up late and then get up early and go vote. How about that? That some works out. Some people will do some that. People do some that. people yeah. will do that. Yeah. So there you go. So that's a, man, that's a good weekend. Some well, even without the Cowboys and the Texans, that's a pretty good weekend. Right Outstanding there. weekend so. in sports. All right. There you go. Thank you for that nice recap. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, also happening this week in the sports world, congratulations to San Antonio yep. FC yeah. on their win last night against the Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC. They're now playing for the USL Championship for the first time in franchise history. Andrew Seeley was at Toyota Field last night for the big win and has the highlights. SAFC's motto is finish the fight, and they certainly had to do that tonight against a very physical Colorado Springs team, but they got that all-important first goal and shut the switchbacks down the rest of the way on route to their first Western Conference title. I think goals changed games. Um, you know, it was uh, great timing for Connor Maloney to score his goal. Uh, it, it was amazing. We, we deserved it. We earned it. Western Conference champions. Um, what makes this, like, incredibly special is that we got to celebrate it in front of the best fans in the league, our fans. Um, and, and there's a sense of pride and joy. Santiago Patino tacked on the club's second goal in the 101st minute to provide the final margin. But the bigger trend, San Antonio's defense and goalkeeper Jordan Farr 
kept Colorado Springs off the score sheet for their second clean sheet of the playoffs. We've done well. <laughs> We've done really well in the playoffs. Uh, but it's, I mean, there's three guys in front of me. I mean, you saw Carter and uh, Fabian have the switch positions, and it's still the same result. Guys just absolutely working their butts off to, to uh, make shots difficult, to make service difficult. Yeah, every guy puts their body on the line, and that's really all you could ask for. Um, we defend for our lives from the forwards to the goalkeeper, and, you know, that's kind of been our thing all year. We've had, you know, we tied the in league history for, for shutouts, and we just really take pride in our defense because our defense creates our offense. There's one more fight left to finish, this time with the USL Championship on the line. It'll be right here at Toyota Field next Sunday at 7.30 p.m. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Andrew Seeley. Thank you, Andrew. 942, 76 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And coming up, more massive layouts are coming for another social media site. And even though summer vacay is long gone, a lot of people still have the travel bug. Your morning consumer news after the break. In your morning consumer news, another tech company apparently planning layoffs after Twitter started letting go thousands of employees. Last week, the Wall Street Journal now says Meta, the Facebook parent rather of Facebook and Instagram, is following suit. The layoffs are expected to affect several thousand people could start as soon as Wednesday. And the summer travel boom is speeding into fall. The Wall Street Journal says hotel chains, cruise lines, and theme parks haven't seen much of a dip after summer travel season. The boosted demand is also boosting profits in the travel industry with vacationers who are so far willing to pay higher prices. Outside with live camp, what a wonderful weekend. Saturday was just picture perfect. Sunday was a little weird, kind of looked like this. A little bit yeah. was back. And then we're still tracking a random shower or two here or there. Yeah, showers are widely separated mm -hmm. around San Antonio right now. So there's still some damp spots on the road. If you're planning on traveling out for lunch maybe this afternoon, know that there are going to be some damp spots. And honestly, the mornings are going to be like this for the next few mornings. Next few days. How much of an inch or what did you say we oh. did earlier? <laughs> One shower, the one I was tracking uh -huh. earlier, that was right over the airport, it dropped a walking, a whopping two hundredths of an inch. Oh my goodness. I know. So that's the kind of rain that we're dealing with. Nuisancey rain that's really not going to help us out as far as the drought is concerned. But let's take a look at the weather headlines for the day today and for the week. Today, rain will be decreasing into the afternoon. However, it's going to stay humid and warm. Tomorrow, if you're planning on voting early tomorrow, Know that it is going to be drizzly and damp in spots, but our next cold front is actually going to drop the humidity for us and be fairly substantial. We'll have a pretty chilly weekend. We'll talk about where temperatures will be over the weekend here in just a bit. But first, I wanted to start with the radar. Again, you can see just how widely separated these showers are around South Central Texas. Not seeing too much as far as uh, rainfall amounts go, but we're still looking at some decent rain uh, in, in some areas with some isolated heavier showers like this one isolated heavy shower that is just between Chavano Park and Hollywood Park. We can get down into the street level here right on Bitters and Blanco. That's where we're seeing some of the heavier isolated showers falling right now. If you're in that neighborhood, you're hearing that rain there. There's absolutely no uh, no lightning with these whatsoever. These are showers. Again, we've got another one working through the medical center right now uh, in, in between Leon Valley. So as street view here, we're right near uh, Danny K uh, and uh, just north of Honey, uh, you can see some of that heavier rain that's pushing to the north at about 10 miles per hour. So if we were to track this one shower that's currently working through Chavano Park and Hollywood Park, if you're lucky, you'll be looking at uh, this uh, shower moving through uh, parts of 1604 here very shortly and uh, toward Reagan High School close to about 10 10 uh, this uh, morning. A wider view and we'll put this in motion here again. We've got some showers in uh, Comal County just to the uh, west of New Braunfels and again widely separated. That's the key here. Not a lot of people seeing rain, but some are seeing some heavier rainfall outside. We're right now a few peaks of sunshine at the airport. 77 degrees humidity 80 
28%. It's very humid. We've been saying it's not going to be a good hair day all day long. And as you take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, even though we'll be seeing a little bit of sun in the afternoon, it's still going to be humid and we'll carry about a 20% chance for a stray isolated shower. 85 for the high temperature today this afternoon and in the evening we'll be looking at temperatures falling into the 70s. All in all though, It'll be a warm one. Our average high temperature this time of year is 74, so we'll be at 84 in San Antonio, 80 in Canyon Lake, 85 in Hondo, 84 in Del Rio, 79 in Kerrville. A closer view here, it'll be 86 in New Braunfels, in Seguin, 86 in Divine. In the upper 70s in the Hill Country, Bernie, Bulverde, Comfort, Kerrville, all at 79 for the high today. And as we take a look at the weather setup, showers from Memphis all the way down to the Rio Grande Valley. We've got a cold front that's setting up across parts of the northwest. Look at all the snow here. And temperatures are actually starting to get into the single digits in parts of Montana. As I take you through the future cast, that cold air is going to wait around for a little while. We're not going to see it move through until Friday. So early tomorrow morning, there is going to be there are going to be areas of drizzle and fog as you're planning on heading to the polls early tomorrow morning. A small chance 20% in the afternoon if you need to go vote after work in a high temperature near 82. And then we'll continue to see that pattern of morning dampness and afternoon warmth through Thursday. But by Friday, a front is going to be moving through Texas. And on Veterans Day itself, it's going to become windy and cooler. Veterans Day, Friday, a high temperature in the low 70s. But by the weekend, our highs and temperatures will be in the 40s and 50s around San Antonio. It's forecasting 56 on Saturday, 58 on Sunday, but morning lows will be in the 40s. Again, this is a very typical November pattern for us. We get that warm Gulf of Mexico moisture in, providing the dampness in the mornings, and then that strong cold front sweeps it away for a few days. It'll be a nice break. It will be. It will be. Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 9.51. And we have a traffic update right now. We've got a major accident. This is eastbound 410 at San Pedro, showing at least two lanes are currently blocked. Uh, fire department is now out on the scene, but this is causing big backups in the North Star Mall area. We'll be right back. Don't forget, we are raising money for cancer research. Some of us here at KSAT taking part in No Shave November. And it's been a great month so far. Here's a look at our current donation tote board right now. Mike wow. Ostrage has zoomed to number one with $1,660 wow. in donations, including a big one this morning. Yeah, that, uh, that was crazy. We started with Mike not even on the leaderboard. Right, and, and he's he come is. out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah he's just, he, that's the way he is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm in second with yes. $705, and thanks to a couple of folks for big donations today, including Eric Alva and the Bilverdi uh, Humane Society for donating to my page. So very nice. We saw the other ones too, but we hope to exceed that amount. Twenty thousand dollars we raised last year, and right now we are well on their way. Our way. Go to kset.com/noshave or scan the QR code on your screen. Some showers out there widely separated, but in a couple of spots, brief heavy rain is possible. But again, these are widely separated. We'll have morning fog and drizzle throughout the rest of the week until Friday when a strong cold front arrives. It'll knock our highs down into the 50s for a chilly weekend. And a quick look at the crash out there at Loop 410 at San Pedro. Looks like still a hold up there. That uh, entrance is being blocked off at this hour. You guys have a great day. Eastbound lanes are being affected, by the way.